story Kings and queens would turn to thieves To find what we've been holding You and me We can take the world Oh, sweethearts give sweet compliments But our love goes without saying Though you make it hard not to spill my heart Every time I see you swaying Darling, you and me We can take the world, darling Cause they can write the stories And they can sing songs But they don't make fairy tales Sweeter than ours And they could climb mountains High into the sky can't take the world
Please be seated. Welcome, everyone. Lawson, Laura, you guys made it. Today's finally here. We're gathered here today with all your family and friends and in the presence of God to join Lawson and Laura together in marriage. We're here to be witnesses of the promise they will make today to faithfully love each other for their entire, entire lives. It's a big moment. So let's commit this time to God. Let's pray. Father, you created marriage. It was your idea to bring together a man and woman and unite them in order to show your glory to the world. We acknowledge your presence with us now as we dedicate this marriage to you. We ask that this evening would honor you. Amen. Who gives this woman to this man? Awesome. Take your bride and come join me up here. All right. Deep breath. <laughs> you guys look amazing. This is going to be an awesome evening together. So how did we get here? Last night at the rehearsal dinner, Lawson's mom, Marsha, walked us through the timeline of how Lawson and Laura came to be, and I want to share some of those details with you guys. And so things first started were all great relationships and college start Instagram. <laughs> Lawson planned to work at a summer camp during the upcoming summer, and he just happened to notice that Laura had worked at the same camp in the past. So out of all the people that Lawson could ask about this specific summer camp he chose to ask Laura. It's a strategic move. <laughs> they first met in person at Texas A&M's uh, most classy event, Chili Fest. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and when they met in person, Lawson was prepared. He got her phone number and he asked her to dinner. A few days later, they went to Outback Steakhouse. And I don't know if it was Lawson's charm or the bloomin' onions, but Laura agreed to go on another date. Now, what Lawson didn't know is that Laura had chosen to remain single for a season of time, but she had made an exception to go on this first date with Lawson. Well, on the second date is when she filled him in. Date number two out at Lake Bryan, Laura told Lawson that she could not continue dating him because she was focused on her relationship with God. Now, fellas, if you're like me, all of us would probably roll our eyes if we heard something like that, but not Lawson. I mean, that was music to his ears to hear about a woman who was pursuing the Lord like Laura was. They spent the summer apart, just as friends, but they stayed in touch, and Lawson asked Laura out again in August before school started. Laura's single season had officially ended, and she said yes. As they dated, they committed to putting Jesus Christ at the center of their relationship. And all both, although both of them would admit that they are broken and sinful people, they made a commitment to purity in their relationship. I'm really proud of you guys, how you've strived to honor God in your relationship. As they continued dating, they got to experience some unique things together. They went to Uganda on a mission trip over spring break. They were also leaders at a summer discipleship program in Florida. And both of those experiences showed that their lives and purpose were aligned. This all led to about 10 months ago, where Lawson went over to Austin, he set up an immaculate 
little proposal, and Laura said yes immediately. Over the last couple of years, I've gotten to know Lawson Mickler. And one of the biggest things that I've learned is that Lawson doesn't waver. Once he commits to something, he's all in. He has confidence in who he is and who God has made him to be. He is a calming and steady presence. Lawson is a hard worker and he's a man of high character. Lawson, my friend, as much as I respect you, you have outdone yourself, right? Laura's reputation precedes her. She is tenacious. If you want something to get done, you just need to ask Laura to do it. She's incredibly driven. She is passionate. One of the first things that I noticed about Laura when I met her was just her heart for her friends, um, specifically some friends who may not have a relationship with the Lord. She is passionate and deeply caring, and she was willing to do whatever it took to make a difference in their lives. Lawson, Laura is going to make you a better man. And Laura Lawson is going to make you a better woman. They both have made great choices in choosing each other. This is a decision that's going to pay off for years to come. But before choosing each other, they made an even wiser decision to commit their lives to following Jesus Christ. When Lawson was in high school, he dated a girl and relied on her for, for fulfillment. And as a freshman in college, he experienced the power of repentance. He learned from his high school years that his fulfillment couldn't be found in another person or other circumstances. Lawson felt the weight of his sin. He knew he needed to turn to Jesus and depend on him. He saw his need for Jesus in his life, and he made a choice to begin clinging to Christ. When Laura was in middle school, there was a college girl who showed her how to make her faith her own. Laura went through several different hardships when she was growing up, but she experienced peace through trials. As Romans 5 says, the sufferings Laura experienced produced perseverance. Perseverance produced character, and character produced hope. She saw how Jesus could make a difference in her life, and it led her to want to give her whole life to Jesus and surrender to him. More than anything, Lawson and Laura want each of you to know the joy, the fulfillment, and the peace that they have found through their relationship with Jesus Christ. They want each of you to know that a fulfilling life can be found in believing that Jesus Christ lived a perfect life, that he died on a cross in our place, and that he rose from the dead, and that each of you can have eternal life by making a personal decision to surrender your life to him. I have tremendous confidence that Lawson and Laura's marriage will work, not only because they've chosen well with each other, but primarily because they first have trusted Christ and are following him. Because their trust is in Christ, an abundant marriage is possible. Beyond basic physical appearances, what first attracted this couple to each other? Listen to what Lawson said. He said, the first thing that caught my eye was her willingness to serve others for the sake of spreading the gospel. I noticed her make sacrifices that were pleasing to the Lord. I could tell she had a selfless heart that wanted to love others well. I've never met anyone more ambitious. If Laura wants to achieve something, she will do it. Laura is aspiring and very determined, which is what I respect most about her. What attracted Laura to Lawson? Here are her thoughts. Right from the start, I could tell he was serious about his relationship with Christ. He had an unshakable confidence about himself that could only be from God. Lawson is strong, yet tender and compassionate. He lives every day completely dependent on the Holy Spirit, and he is absolutely fearless. A few thoughts on marriage. Marriage was God's idea. His idea is for one man and one woman to join together in one lifetime of commitment to each other. And since God created marriage, he knows how marriage works best. And so God emphasizes one word to each of you. To Lawson, the word is love. Ephesians 5 says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And to Laura, the word is respect. 
Ephesians 5 also says, wives, submit respectfully to your husband's leadership. The key for you, Lawson, is to love Laura, even when you don't feel respected. And Laura, the key for you is to respect Lawson, even when you don't feel loved. It's no coincidence that a woman's greatest need in marriage is to be loved, and God's number one command to the husband is to love his wife. And it's also not a fluke that a man's greatest need in marriage is to be respected and that God commands a woman to respectfully submit to her husband's leadership. Lawson, your continued love of Laura, and Laura, your continued respect of Lawson is God's plan for your marriage. If you do this, it will be a wonderful example, example of Jesus Christ in the church. As you both commit to faithfully fulfill your roles in marriage, you will meet each other's deepest needs. It's so simple to understand, but it's incredibly difficult to do. That's why we need God's help. And Lawson and Laura are trusting God for his help. You guys ready for the vows? Let's do this. If you guys want to turn and face each other. They both have chosen to write their own vows. And so Lawson, we will start with you whenever you are ready. Now, Laura Jean, I stand here knowing that you are a gift from God. Your joy that resembles a constant smile is contagious. Your love for others has shaped so many people in this room, especially mine. From the moment I met you, I realized I had never met someone who cared so deeply for others. Your satisfaction, fulfillment, and peace come from one source, our Savior Jesus Christ. Today I am more confident than ever before because you love Jesus more than me. Your heart is full of desire to sacrifice yourself for the service and comfort of others. You are the most beautiful human I have ever laid my eyes on. Your external beauty first caught my eye, but I know your inner beauty is eternal. Today I join my life to yours, not only as your husband, but as your best friend and your biggest supporter. I am thrilled to be the shoulder you lean on and the companion of your life. Laura, I promise to love you for who you are and for who you are yet to become. I promise to be patient and to remember that all things between us are rooted in love. I promise to nurture your dreams and help you achieve them. I promise to share my whole heart with you and to remember to show you how deeply I care for you and no matter the challenges that come our way. I promise to always put you first, even during hunting season. I promise to lead our family closer to Jesus. I promise to forgive and show grace. I promise to always love our Savior first so that my love for you is an extension of his love. I promise to keep you safe and well protected. It is an honor to represent you as my wife and exemplify Christ in his church. Laura, I promise to be honest, faithful, and to love you forever. Well done, man, well done. All right, Laura, you ready? Lawson Mark Mickler, the man of my dreams. More than I could have ever prayed for in a husband. You are my greatest, most evident touch of heaven on this earth. You are a man after God's own heart. You have relentlessly pursued him and carefully made him the center of our relationship. You hold strong to your convictions and you push those around you to do the same. You live your life by the word of God, and you do everything you can to advance his kingdom. You are strong and brave. Your smile is captivating, and I'll forever cherish the, crease, the creases on your face when you grin. You never fail to thank God for the breath of life each and every day and give him the praise and glory he deserves. Your dependency on gripes has transformed my perspective and changed my life. Since I've, known Le Since I've known you, you have selflessly shown Christ's love to me with your forgiveness, your slowness to anger, your tenderness, and your readiness to serve me. God tells us in Genesis 2 that he created woman to be a helper suitable for her husband. 
For this servant leader like you as a husband, what a privilege that will be to help you to lead our family to Christ, to help you disciple our children, to help you become the man God intends for you to be, to help you serve those around you, to help you relentlessly pursue our Savior day after day. I can't think of a greater honor. I pray that as your wife, I can be that helper that you deserve. Lawson, I promise to love God first and foremost because I know that only when I am satisfied in him, then I can love you fully. I promise to humbly serve you daily with patience and grace. During deer season, I promise to wake up at the crack of dawn to go to the deer barn with you sometimes <laughs> to wait for a big buck to come along. I promise to faithfully go with you to any city, country, or continent that the Lord may lead us to for the spread of his great name. I promise to never expect for our lives together to be perfect. I know that we live in an imperfect world. When you are weary, I promise to hearten you with scripture and truth and point you towards our Savior. I promise to love you without conditions and to never stop pursuing your heart. I promise I will not let the circumstances of our lives determine our joy. Each day is a day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Lawson Mc Mark Mickler, it is my pr greatest privilege to become your wife, to be united with you as one flesh before God. I trust you with my soul and my entire being. Before God and before our family and friends, it is my joy to pledge and present my whole self to you, to love, cherish, and serve you until death do us part. Well done, guys. It was good. It's time for the rings. The wedding bands symbolize two things. First, they are symbols of commitment that tells the public that a person is committed to someone else. And secondly, they represent unending, consistent love to each other. All right, Lawson, we'll start with you. You could repeat after me. My dearest Laura. My dearest Laura. This ring I give thee. This ring I give thee. In token and in pledge. In token and in pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. And with all my earthly goods. With all my earthly goods. I give my all to thee. I give my all to thee. Okay, Laura, if you'll repeat after me. My dearest Lawson. My dearest Lawson. This ring I give thee. This ring I give thee. In token and in pledge. In token and in pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. And with all my earthly goods. And with all my earthly goods. I give my all to thee. I give my all to thee. All right. At this time, I want to invite the family to come up um, to pray for Lawson and Laura. And while they're coming up, I want to invite everyone that's here to just pray for their new marriage. Pray for this couple, that God would strengthen them, protect them, and bless them as they begin their new life together.
Let's pray. Father, you've set marriage apart as a special bond, a gift from you. And right now we ask that you bless Lawson and Laura as they begin their life together. Give them joy as they commit to faithfully serve one another. Pray that they would experience all the blessings you have to offer them in marriage. We ask that you would receive glory from their marriage in return. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now by the power vested in me, by the state of Texas, but more importantly by God himself, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Lawson, let's see what you got. What God, what God has joined together, let no man or woman ever drive apart. It's my honor and privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Lawson Mickler. <laughs> 